This video segment is to make you understand the renal pyramids. So just concentrate on the renal pyramids. Forget about the others. So I will give you a little uh, overview of the uh, renal kid uh, re uh, kidney. This is the capsule. This is the upper pole. This is the lower pole. And the equigenic band-like area below the capsule of the kidney is the cortex. This is the cortex. This is the posterior wall. And this is the cortex. Its echogenicity is almost equal to that of the liver. This is the liver. And these cystic areas that you are seeing these below the cortex where you see the stars blinking this area then this area these area this area now this is medulla medulla is where you see the pyramids these are renal pyramids these are quite prominent pyramids. So, and I have focused it intentionally in a scanning plan so that you can see as many pyramids, renal pyramids as you wish to because we have to report that the status of corticomedullary differentiation. So you see, if you see the medulla and the pyramids in it, this is the pyramid and this is the cortex, it means that the corticomedullary distinction is intact. This is the lower pole. Let us see. This is the pyramid, this black tiny cystic area. Usually they are triangular. This area, this where the star is blinking. These are pyramids at the lower pole. And here you will see pyramids at the anterior pole. Eklamba salak is saropia. So you see, this is a pyramid, this is a pyramid, this is a pyramid, similarly in the posterior cortex medulla, this is the pyramid and you have to remember that these are not cysts, don't label it as cortical cysts or medullary cysts, these are all medulla. I magnify you will be able to see that uh, in few of the though all of them contain uh, these uh, tiny cystic this is the tiny area at the anterior end of the pyramid this is the arcuate vessel so at times these when they are too prominent they are labeled as calculi be aware that this is the arcuate vessel and not a calculus or calcification. This is the pyramid, not a cyst. Cyst, uh, a medullary cyst should not be labeled in such situations. Be aware of these facts. Again, this is the pyramid. This is the pyramid. This is a magnified view and this is a pyramid you see. This is a pyramid with an arcuate vessel around it. This is the cortex and this is the capsule of the kidney. This is the transverse of the kidney and uh, you will see pyramid both in the anterior and posterior regions. This is the pyramid and this tiny area where the star is blinking is the 
our Kuwait vessel. Now, this is a pyramid with our Kuwait vessel. This is a pyramid and this time area that you are seeing is a our Kuwait vessel where the star is blinking. Concentrate on this. This is a pyramid. And this is a pyramid in the posterior medallar region. This is a pyramid in the posterior medallar region. Lumbasa, Roko. This is a magnified view. And here, if you see, here are one, two, and three pyramids with arcuate vessels, with arcuate vessels, with arcuate vessels. This is the renal vein entering into the kidney. So this study was intention was intentionally based on one reason to make you aware of the pyramids so that you, it is not confused with the cysts in the kidney and secondly the arcuate vessels, thirdly their location <coughs> and fourthly their importance because corticomedullary differentiation has to be reported to the referring doctor. So here you can confidently say that the corticomedullary distinction is intact. So what is the normal cortical thickness can also be obtained from this view. Normal cortical thickness is 5.6 in this patient. So it ranges between 5 to 6. So this is with a normal range. This is the pyramid, this is the pyramid, this is the pyramid. So this is the medullary region. Now if we combine both the cortex as well as the medulla. So now this is the parenchyma. Parenchyma contains the cortex and the medulla. So this is combining cortex and the medullary region becomes the parenchyma of the kidney. It, it measures 12.8 millimeters in this patient. However, the normal range is between 12 to 15 millimeters. So the parenchymal thickness is normal. Echogenicity we talked about. Cortical thickness is normal. And the parenchymal thickness is with a normal range. Another point of study is to see if the proximal ureter is dilated or not. This is not a calcification. You see, this is the minimal hydronephrosis that you are seeing in this patient. Minimal hydronephrosis. And this is the proximal ureter. The proximal ureter should not exceed more than 7 millimeters. In this patient, it is 3 millimeters. So, this is with a normal. Now, there is a bright, shiny, echogenic area with posterior shadowing. So, if there is posterior shadowing and you see an echogenic area within the calluses, it is, it measures 3.6 millimeters. So, this is a concretion. This is not a calculus. Anything, any echogenic area giving posterior shadowing and measuring less than 5 will be labeled as concretion and any echogenic area giving posterior shadowing 
weighing more than 5 millimeters will be labeled as a calculus. So this is not a calculus, this is a concretion, killing posterior shadow. So remember the difference between the calculus and the uh, concretion. So I will suffix with this study up to this level.